All right, I think I, I'm going to get started. Uh, it's it's uh, right on time. So, um, uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, my session on uh, Rose tutorial. So, um, it's actually kind of uh, to my surprise because uh, I, I, I noticed that uh, I was told that uh, more than 100 people signed up for this. Um, I think more and more people are still coming. So, um, so I'm just going to assume uh, every one of you have not tried this uh, software before. So I'm going to start uh, from the very basic. Um, so I guess um, I'm sure most of, uh, some of you already know um, uh, the basic features. So uh, just be patient because I'm going to go, go into the question sessions uh, in half an hour. So yeah, so the first 30 minutes, I'm going to just talk and demo. Um, and then I'll leave, you, I'll leave the, half, the, the other half an hour for all the questions. So these are some quick things. Um, to, to get the Roast software, you can just go to Paralab slash Roast. And for the documentation and all the uh, code, you can just go to GitHub and uh, go to my account and import HY and you can get Roast there. And also, if if you haven't done so, you can you can sign up on this mailing list. You can you can just uh, search for the uh, frequently asked questions and and um, or you just ask ask questions there or just share your experience in using those. Andy, quick question: Do you plan to share these recordings on one of these websites? Yeah, yeah. I'm, or the slides or something? I'm I'm gonna just share everything today, like this recording and these slides, and also I have a demo script here, like basically everything after after this uh, tutorial. Okay. Um, so this is an overview for the uh, demonstration today. So basically, those has three major functions. Uh, just one is uh, simply roast for simulation, and uh, the the second one is roast target. So you can do uh, the optimization of the uh, transcranial electrical simulation, or uh, also known as targeting. And once you've done uh, simulation or targeting, you can use a simple function called review risk to review all the results. Um, and also, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, de detailed outputs uh, from roast package. And then later, I'm going to mention some other issues. So first, let's take a look at the Roast. So this is the basic synopsis of Roast. It takes in uh, um, two required arguments. The first one is uh, the uh, MRI to your subject. It's just simply the pass to your MRI file. It can be either T1 or T2. And uh, if you want to use both T1 and T2, you can just use this T2 option uh, and put your T2 file in this option value. And I'll give you an example later for this. And the, the second argument for roast is this recipe. So basically, the the montage you want to use for your uh, simulation for the uh, transcranial simulation. Uh, this recipe follows this format of uh, elect electron name and current value. Um, and then the third uh, argument is option uh, is optional. So basically, all the those options you can put in here. And it follows this uh, MATLAB convention of um, name and value pairs. Uh, I Andy, think Andy, before you get into the nitty gritty, a, a question came up as to whether rows can be used to uh, model high frequency TS or RTNS. Maybe you want to say a few words of the overall goal of it. I mean, what's the overall objective? What's the input? What's the output? Something like a big picture before you get into the specific commands. I think many people are, are maybe new to this. Yeah, so so basically, uh, Roast is a, a very easy to use software package for you to simulate transcranial electrical stimulation, um, uh, either direct current or alternating current for uh, low frequency, say like uh, usually lower than uh, one kilohertz. So if you are if you are doing um, um, transcranial simulation with lower than one kilohertz frequency, you can still use Roast because uh, in in uh, in, uh, in the physics um, uh, the low frequency alternative current is 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 the so called quantum static. So in terms of modeling, it's it's actually the same as the, the direct current. Um, so yeah, so so you can you can still use Roast and Roast is for this simulation and the other uh, Roast target is is for um, Getting the optimum touch to to guide your current to the interested brain region to optimize this stimulation. Um, yeah, I think that's basically for this question. Um, so I guess I'm, right now I'm gonna just uh, start um, doing some demonstration to to give you um, a, a direct feeling of how to use this software. So 
um, the first one I'm going to just show you is uh, some basic demo of this this uh, those functions. So basically, I'm going to just do, try to run this this comment here. So here I'm just trying to um, run simulation on this um, uh, example subject one. So if you download Roast, um, the, there's a, a folder called example. And in this example, there's like some example data, like this subject one is, is one sub, subject MRI. And uh, here I'm gonna just run simulation on this subject with this uh, specific recipe. So I'm gonna put 0.3 mean amp current into electro F1 and 0.7 mean amp into P2. I'm, I'm gonna ask 0.6 mean amp out of electro C5 and 0.4 mean amp out of electro O2. And then I'm gonna just give this simulation a specific tag. I'm gonna call it basic demo. So I, I highly recommend you do this because if you, if you don't do this this uh, specific um, tag name here, Rose will, will give it a, a default tag name with the date and time when you run this simulation. So basically if I don't do this, it just, they'll just give you a date, uh, the tag name of uh, April 20, 2020 and at 12.06 p.m. So that's, that's gonna be hard for you to find it later. So I'm gonna just use this tag name and once you're done, once you're ready, you just hit enter and you, you can run this. Because I, 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 uh, for this uh, demonstration, I, I already ran this before so that right now it's just loading the results. And by the way, when you, when you run Roast, you have to make sure you're in the Roast uh, root directory where you can see all these uh, like example, uh, leave all this folder and, and you can also see this, those function here. So just to make sure you're in the right place. Um, so once a road stage run, is down running, you can, you can see all these outputs, all these figures. See like uh, it, it shows you are the uh, MRI the, the slice of, of the MRI you're, you're running simulation on. You can also click run to, to check the uh, MRI. And also give, it shows you the segmentation from the uh, uh, SPM, which is inside those package. You can, you can click run. And uh, 3D rendering of the voltage, you can just uh, view this uh, voltage on the, on the brain. And also the electric field And also you see this electrode, uh, the actual 3D, 3D location of all the uh, electrode you, you chose in your uh, recipe. And also the size view of the uh, voltage in the, in the brain and the uh, electric field size view. And if you zoom in, you can see the, the, the direction of the electric field uh, represented by, by these arrows. Um, the other thing you notice is uh, when you click around, you see this coordinates here, uh, which is the coordinates for the, the point you just clicked. And it shows that uh, uh, one is voxel coordinates and the other one is the, the MNI coordinates. So this is a very uh, useful feature because you can know the, the actual uh, MNI coordinates you just clicked. Um, all right, so that's for our first example, uh, a very basic demonstration. Can so, I pause you for a moment, Andy? I want to tell the audience, um, in case they didn't hear it at the beginning, we encourage you to ask questions on the chat. So if you have any questions as to what you heard so far, just go right ahead and type them in, and I will relay them um, because it's easier for me to read it. Okay. All right. So um, that, that was the, the, the first basic example. So what if we want to use a different cap? Because um, by default, those use the 1010 uh, international EEG system. So if you go to the Roast uh, folder, like right after you download and you unzip the, the those package, you, you will get this folder. And there's a, a Excel file called cap info. If you open it, you will see all these detailed uh, electro layouts. So basically Roast supports three different systems. Uh, the first one by default is, is 1010, which is which, which is a subset of 10.5. So if you, if you look around this, this Excel file, you see all these uh, layouts. Uh, for example, this is the 10.5 uh, layout. You, um, you can see all the possible electrodes in 10.5 system. And actually I, I, I extended this 10.5 by placing two uh, extended rows 
of electrodes, and I, I, I named it as, I named them as EX some, some number and EXX some numbers. And you can also see all these electrodes placed on this uh, um, head uh, with the 3D rendering. And, and also, if you go to the second tab, you can see this um, biosemi electro layout. So basically, you can also do biosemi electrodes. You can just pick, pick up any electro from, from this layout. And, and also, I extend this system by um, placing more electrodes on the um, outer, outer ring or, or the lower part of the head. You can, you can also do a third type of layout, which is EGI system. So basically, this uh, those is very flexible. You can you can do uh, three major uh, 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 electro layouts in your simulation. Um, say, for example, if you want to do uh, this bio semi electro, we just use this caption called cap type, and then put in bio semi, and then choose any electro uh, in the bio semi uh, layout. You can just place bio semi electrodes on the on the uh, subject, um, and then. So what if you want to place electrodes on, on any uh, location you want, like say customize ele uh, electro locations. Say for example, if, uh, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm running the simulation for subject one. Andy, quick questions about the electrodes. One question is whether one can use extra cephalic electrodes. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I'm gonna just uh, cover it in uh, two minutes. So uh, let's go back to and another related question is whether um, one can use positions from a 3D digitizer. Okay, let's, let me answer the first question first. So uh, extracephalic electrodes, um, if you go back to this uh, electro layout, um, because usually sometimes the, the extracephalic electrode is placed on, on the shoulders. Um, and and in, in the simulation, we can assume the electrode is placed on the neck. So basically in, in the layout here, you, you see this neck one, neck three, neck two, and, and uh, here neck four. So basically these four neck electrodes can be um, treated as uh, extra cephalic electrodes. Um, and this, this four neck electrodes are, are added for the three uh, layouts, also in biosemi. You see this neck three, neck one here, and also in EGI. So, so, so yes, you can do uh, extra cephalic electrodes at, at these four locations. So the second question, can we use uh, individualized electro locations digitized using 3D digitizer? Uh, sorry, that's not supported right now. I, I think, um, but I, I, I think if you have the um, uh, coordinates of the electro from this 3D digitizer, you can, you can import those uh, coordinates as a text file and then, and then treat them as your customized electro locations. So basically that's the example uh, I'm gonna talk right now. Say like, I want to place customized electro locations on the uh, subject one. So, so say, uh, let's just open subject one. Uh, right here. See, like, um, let's see, we want to place the electrode at uh, um, any location. I don't know. Like, let's see, let's see that we want to place the electrode here on the uh, right side of the uh, uh, head. So you just click here. Uh, after you, you click, you see this, this number is here, XYZ. You just record this number into a text file. Let's open text file and just write down this, this number. One oh one one and two to four. And then you name, you name this as, you, you, you pick up a name for this electro. Uh, you start with custom, I don't know, custom electro one. And then you can keep doing this for, for as many customized electrodes you, as, as you want. Say, I don't know, what if I wanna place electro at some very strange location, say like on the nose. I just click the nose somewhere here and then I got this XYZ number here. I just record this, it's called coordinates. Uh, let's see, custom leg two, see this 98, two, two, four, 100. And once you're done with this, you just save this text file. 
um, make sure you save this text file into the same folder where the uh, MI is like this. I have my subject one here, so I save this under this same folder. And then you name it as, you name this text file following the uh, MI file. So because the MI is called subject one dot NI, so I'm gonna name it as subject one uh, custom location. So you have to name it as custom locations because only in this way you can just recognize this text file. Let me pause you and address some of the questions that have come up. Um, so one cannot use the shoulder electrode. Uh, I can also answer that quickly. Um, the, from what we know from simulating actual shoulder electrode versus the neck electrode, the results are nearly identical. So the current flow, if you assume the current is coming through the right neck, is not that different than the right shoulder. So, so the, these neck electrodes are a fairly good approximation for left right shoulder or front and back of the chest. Uh, the other question that I don't know an answer for, Andy, it, can you do MNI coordinates when you do these custom electrodes? Um, not really. Right now, if you want to do customized electro locations, you, the only way here is to click in the MI, which is to get the voxel coordinates. Um, for if you want, if, if you only have MI coordinates, I suggest you um, convert it that convert the MI coordinates to voxel coordinates because right now those can only accept voxel coordinates for customized electro location. I guess that answers the other question here. What coordinate system is used in these custom electrodes? Yeah, that's that's the uh, uh, voxel coordinates in the original MRI space. That's it. The only thing I can do right now. Uh, another related question, is it possible to perform intracerebral stimulation, place electrodes inside the head, I guess? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, Theoretically, it's possible. Um, I haven't tried myself. Um, I don't know what, what will happen for the uh, finite element solver because the boundary condition is tricky for this situation. But, but I, of course you can try, you can just click, say here, you can click in the, in the, on the codex and then record this voxel, num voxel coordinates number and, and, and then do this and see what's happening. Um, what about the size of the electrodes? Is it possible to? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, something I'm gonna talk, uh, talk about soon. Another question was, can one use a template MRI if you don't have your own subjects MRI? Um, yeah, sure. So basically the, the, the example data uh, included in ROST is a, a MRI 152 head, which is uh, a, a template or standard head. Is it possible to talk at first and then also? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna just keep going. <laughs> it's yeah, I'll read them to you, Andy. I'll read them yeah, to you, yeah. don't worry. So basically, let's keep continuing on this customized location. So uh, you save this as subject one customer locations uh, because I, I did this before. I have this subject one customer locations. Uh, let me just open that. So initially I did this um, before this, this, this demonstration. I have, I have I defined three uh, custom electrodes. So then let's, let's just place this uh, customized electrode on the subject. So I, I, I am placing the first one and the third one custom, customized electrodes. And I also am using this neck electrode, which can be considered as extracephalic electrodes. Uh, let's see what's happening if I run this. So you see this uh, 3D rendering of the uh, electric field in the brain. Yeah, basically the, all, the, the opposite is always following this style, the uh, MRI, the segmentation, and then 3D rendering of uh, voltage and electric field and, 3D, uh, and the slice view of voltage and electric field. So you see this, uh, let me see. See this uh, 3D rendering of the electro field with the electro location. You see um, the neck electrode, the two two neck electrodes, and and then one customized electrode. I just click on the on the right side of the head and one on the nose. 
and let me let me show you this in in uh using the, the other function called the uh, uh, review res. So this function is 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 for once you're done with with the simulation. Before you go there, Andy, a quick question came up again about this issue of AC versus DC. So the question is, we can specify the intensity, but not the frequency. So is so um yeah. So let me clarify this. Um, in 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 those, uh, everything is treated as the DC. Um, because as I just mentioned, the uh the AC cases, if the frequency is below one kilohertz, uh, I don't remember the exact number, but something like one kilohertz. The uh, um, the simulation is all the same uh, for AC and DC. So we treat AC below one kilohertz as, as also as DC, or it's actually called a constant static. So basically, you don't have to specify any frequency because there's no frequency in in those because everything is DC. So the way to think of AC um, is that the ma what you're displaying here is the magnitude. So it may be oscillating at ten hertz, for instance. And the total magnitude of that turn hertz oscillation is what you're what's being computed here. So it doesn't matter if it's a constant current or an oscillating current. When you're showing the magnitude, it's identical for both, and that's a, a fairly accurate uh, assumption uh, for low frequencies, as Andy said. So right. essentially, TDCS and TACS from a uh, modeling perspective of the strength of the electric field is really identical from a basic physics standpoint. So that's why there is no uh, specific mechanism for, for uh, frequency. Right. So thanks for the clarification. Um, so let me continue. Um, you, uh, let's, so let's, let's see, um, you, just, you just run this uh, simulation using customized electrolocation. Uh, <clears throat> and right now you want to review the results. So you don't, maybe you don't want to type all this detailed information. Hang on, there's another follow-up question on this issue of AC, Andy. <laughs> so following up on the above question, I read that for, um, for AC delivered over two locations with a different phase. Um, typically, most hardware that does sinusoidal stimulation and uses several, more than a single pair of electrodes so there's hardware that has a single pair of electrode. Obviously, there's only a single phase, and what I just said is, is exactly correct. Now, if you had two pairs of electrodes, and each one has a different phase, it's true that it gets a little more complicated then. But to my knowledge, there's um, um, I'm not sure there's any hardware that actually does that. So if you really are in that scenario, um, shoot me an email. We have to think about it, but I think it's, it, it, it's gonna be modeling each pair separately and then finding the, a clever way of adding it up. Right. I think it's not too complicated, but it definitely deserves a little bit of thought. So I don't wanna just answer it. Right. Um, so there's more question coming in. Um, what we should consider if we use MI image from the patient such as epilepsy with steps electrode uh, so um, sorry about that. Uh, I don't think Rose can can do this <clears throat> um, because um, in Rose everything is for transcranial stimulation. Um, but if you have if you have elect electro implanted, um, um, you you have. I think the only way to do it is to ma manually model those electrodes uh, in the segmentation. Uh, if you use those, I don't think you can you can you can do that. Here's another uh, related question. If I have two stimulators and I connect both of them, um, essentially it's the same thing. You just enter here. So if it's DC currents, you just enter each stimulator does two electrodes. So you just enter all four. So that will give you exactly the same results. If you use two TDCS stimulators, each has two electrodes. You enter here, all four electrodes is simply additive. So all, all, all of these results that you see here with multiple electrodes is really the addition of what uh, all electrodes together do. I don't know if that, that was Jenny Lee that asked that. I hope that answers it. If not, please. Um, okay. Again. So let me just continue. I don't think I can finish this in half an hour. <laughs> 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 Let's try to finish in one hour and, and answer the question along the way. Um, so 
basically once you're done with with those you can you can review the results without typing all the details you can just say review risk and then keep the same subject name but you can just uh, delete all these details but just enter the simulation tag see this uh, i just i just did this try customer electrode so i just enter the simulation tag and you can add uh, a third uh, argument uh, maybe you want to show the electric field in, in all the tissues because uh, when you run ROST, it only gives you the 3D rendering and slice view of the brain. Maybe you want to show all the tissues, so you just enter all and see this is what's happening. <clears throat> so basically you see the 3D rendering of, of everything, the entire head and also size view of the entire head. Um, and I, I also wanna show you the, the electrodes. So basically, I, like I just say, I click on the nose and the right, high, right side of the head. So this, this is how you do uh, customized electrodes. Um, <clears throat> let's keep going. So next one, uh, the next couple of, of examples are about how to uh, configure the electrode, say, Basically, you can do different electro shapes and configure the electro size. Say, well, what if we wanna we wanna do a pad electro? You, you can just use this elect type option and put in pad. And you can actually um, control the electro shape for each electro individually. Say here, this this example, I'm placing uh, three different electrodes uh, with three different shapes. So, I'm I'm putting all the shape. Uh, configuration using this electro type uh, option and uh, the electro shape will follow the same order as the electrode. So basically the first electro FP1 will be a disc and the second one FC4 will be a pad electrode and the third one will be a ring electrode. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna run this because I, I, we're running <laughs> short of time. Uh, and then you can also configure the electro size. So uh, basically you use this electro size option and, and here, in this example, we're we're controlling the, the we're controlling the size for this pad electrode. So basically, the pad electrode will have this size. Um, what this what does this mean? This means the pad electrode will will be um, uh, forty five millimeter long, uh, twenty five millimeter wide, and four millimeter thick. And you can actually do this size control for each electrode individually, uh, like in this example here and um, controlling the size for the disc and pad and ring electrode separately. So basically the disc electrode will be, uh, will have a eight millimeter uh, radius and two millimeter of thickness. And pad electrode will be this, this size. And the ring electrode will have an inner radius of uh, five millimeter, outer radius of eight millimeter and the thickness of two millimeter. So basically all these syntax are very straightforward. Um, and also, the last feature of the actual configuration is you can control the orientation of the pad electrode. You can use this uh, electro or orient, this, this option name to, to control that. You can you can do uh, different, uh, you can you can uh, do uh, LR means, uh, uh, meaning left, right. You can do AP meaning uh, anterior, posterior. Basically the, the pad electrode is, is going from back to front. And you can also do SI meaning superior, inferior, meaning the, the electrode is going up and down. Um, you can also do, you can also use this uh, exact um, vector, exact direction vector to control the uh, orientation of the pad electrode. But, but this, this feature is, is still not perfect. I, I just, I tested it by myself. It's, it's, it's kind of buggy. Uh, I'm going to improve it in the next uh, release. Um, so the other thing is, uh, if, what if you, you also have a T2 image? So you have both T1 and T2, and you want to use both of them. So you just put the T1 image in the, in the first uh, first argument, and then you use this T2 option here, and then you, you put the, the path and file name of your T2 image, and everything else is the same. And the other two features I wanna uh, advertise is uh, resampling and zero padding. Both of them are very useful in practice um, because uh, sometimes your, your input MRI does not have isotropic uh, resolution say like, uh, I think, uh, I know uh, some of the clinical scans, they have like uh, one millimeter by 0.5 millimeter by 0.5 millimeter resolution. So that's very tricky. 
to build the model because in, in that case, the electro size will not be that accurate. So I, I would highly recommend you to turn on this resampling. So those will uh, resample everything into one millimeter isotopic resolution. And you can, you just simply do this resampling on and everything will, ha will be handled by rows. And also this zero padding is also very helpful um, because I've seen a lot of users posting their errors on the, those the mailing list saying they cannot build a model, they cannot place electrodes, they just crashed. Uh, that's because um, sometimes the, the scan is cut off on the, on the, on the side, say like, like uh, it's, it's cut off around, around the ear. So basically there's, it, there's no space to place any electrode around the, the, the temporal area. So basically in, in that cases, in, in that case, you can just uh, turn on, uh, use this zero padding. So you do a zero padding of, of 60. Um, that will be very helpful to, to uh, give you some empty space around the, the image boundary so that electrodes can be placed there. And here, I, I wanna show you this example because here I'm, I'm doing this uh, MI 152 head, the standard head, I'm placing this extended electrode EXX19 so if you if you re remember this layout, this electro is actually uh, here. It's very low. It's in the lower part of the head. And and the MI one fifty two head. It's uh, let me open that head. So this MMI head is it's cut off uh, on the on the around the uh, the nose. So basically, if you want to place the on, on the lower part, it's 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 not possible unless you turn on this zero panning. So let me show you this example. I'm gonna just use the review results to give you a quick review. So this example. So I just type in the tag, use zero padding, and I, I wanna show everything. <clears throat> so you see it's, it's extended, you get the lower part. So this, this is the cool, cool feature of those that I like, I like best because if you don't have, if the, if the MI does not cover the lower part of the head and you do zero padding, it will automatically give you uh, some artificial uh, extension of the lower part of the head. And you can compare this with the uh, original MRI where you see it's, it's actually extended and then you press the, the, the electro EXX19 on the very low part of the head. So this is a very useful feature to do zero padding. And um, there are two other uh, uh, options in those to control the mesh and the tissue connectivities. These, these two are uh, not that commonly used, but sometimes they are also very helpful. Um, because sometimes, I, I also I saw the uh, user posting on the mailing list, like they're saying the ran through rows, uh, uh, no crashing, no problem, but still in, in their model, they got, they got nothing because when, if, if they open the uh, soft electric field, they basically they only got uh, not a number. So if that happens, um, usually it, there's a problem in your mesh. So, so sometimes the mesh resolution is too low and you wanna increase the mesh density to, um, to give it more numerical accuracy. So uh, to, to make that happen, you can just uh, use this mesh options. Oh, sorry, you can just do... <clears throat> so in, in mesh options, you, you do things using a structure. And these, these two uh, parameters, you can use them to control the mesh density. So basically you, uh, you just uh, uh, decrease the dist bound and decrease maximal to, to increase uh, the, the size of each finite element so that you increase your mesh density. And these are pretty advanced and technical. So um, um, if, you, if, you run, if you get in any trouble like uh, seeing N and N in your, in your uh, soft model, uh, I will suggest you to decrease the, these, these numbers here. And also you can use this conductivity options to, uh, to give each tissue type a specific uh, conductivity. And the, this option is, is not that commonly used. Um, so 
that's pretty much uh, everything for those. Uh, I think I got more question. Andy, let me relay some of the questions for you. Okay. So the one question was, uh, is there any way of accounting for salient versus gel? What is actually simulated by default? Um, right, right. So basically for that, you can, you can actually control the conductivity of, of the uh, gel and, and uh, salient um, by using this conductivity option. So here, uh, there's, there's, uh, you can use gel here. So um, let me open the uh, documentation somewhere. Uh, those. So basically in the conductivity, you can control uh, the conductivity for everything. So I think what you need is for, for the gel. The default is 0 0.3 and for salient, it's a different kind you just put in a different number here. Um, what's the next question? Somebody asked about if you had an error during segmentation, is there a way of fixing that? Uh, it depends. <laughs> what kind of error did you get? <laughs> Uh, maybe you can type it in what kind of error. We'll go on to the next one. If you have a mesh from somewhere else, is, is it possible to import that mesh? It is possible, uh, but uh, I think it's pretty technical to do that. And it also depends on uh, what kind of data format you have for that mesh. That, 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 can, that, that answer can be very detailed. I, I suggest you just shoot me an email. And, and <laughs> okay. Another question is, um, could you talk about uh, how to interpret the vector information produced by rows? For example, to compare current direction between subjects. How could I tell which direction current is flowing in, in respect to the cortical surface from right. looking well, at the numerical output of EF underscore L? Right, I, I will get to that point in like maybe 20 minutes. And what's next? Here's another one. I often see warnings, not errors, about a list of notes not found. Oh, right. Not in, when running rows, should I worry about that? No, you don't have to worry about it. I think that's, that's from the uh, get DP solver. Um, when there's numerical instability, they, they, they just give in this warning message. That's totally fine. Um, here, somebody follows up on the question of gel. Is that the default setting? Um, so yeah. by default, is, is gel modeled underneath the electro by default? Right, that's correct. Okay. Um, there's a question as to when, when should uh, adjust conductivity based on, on temperature or uh, frequency? Uh, I think we just talked about this. If the frequency is below one kilohertz, there's no major change in the conductivity. But in terms of temperature, I am not an expert in that. I don't, I don't quite know the answer. I think the bottom line, if you have some reason to believe that your conductivities are somewhat different than you adjust them. I think Andy, the conductivities here are taken from where? These are all the sort of default. The default, conduct, default values here are all from the literature like from a couple of papers from like 1960s or 1970s, like very old. But, but we've been using this for years. So it's kind of reliable. And, and we, we, we validated this, this values in the, the, uh, using the intracranial recordings. I would say it's perfect, but it's empirically reliable. Uh, one person wanted to have sort of an overall infrastructure of what the numerical uh, computations are. I guess segmentation, FEM. How, do you have a, a overview of that, Andy, somewhere? Um, I, or does it take too long right now? I, I can't. I don't remember off my on the top of my head right now. Uh, there's a flow chart somewhere, uh, maybe in the paper. But, but the, the numerical infrastructure is, is just the finite M model. It's not FDM, it's FEM. Um, the user have control over these. User, uh, user only have, have control over the mesh options, which is the, uh, the mesh density from this um, uh, ISO2 mesh that, uh, software. But for, in terms of software, users don't have any control.
Um, all right, I think I think that's. So the there is one. Russia, just to answer that, the overall structure is SPM first does the segmentation of the MRI. After that, a mesh is built, a volumetric mesh. Um, after that, um, FEM, sorry, electrodes are placed on the segmentation first. Then a mesh is built, and then a finite element model injects currents and simulates the resulting electric field. So it's sort of the overall structure. And the code used for each is the segmentation is done with SPM. The electrode placement is uh, in-house code. Andy, correct me if any of this is wrong. That is correct. The, the meshing is done with ISO to mesh. Right. And the finite element model is done with get DP. Right. Um, okay, so this- There's one, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go, on, go ahead. There's one question about boundary elements versus final elements versus you know, volumetric versus surface modeling. So all modeling in ROSE is done volumetric. Right, that's, that's how we name it. It's called ROSE and that O stands for volumetric. And it's, it's finite element, it's not boundary element. And the advantage of using finite element is that you can model where uh, the uh, with a complicated structure with realistic uh, geometry, like, like the skull. So you can have holes, you can have openings on the skull, but if you're using boundary element, you're not allowed to have that numerically. I mean, if you want to know more details, you can just go to the rose paper. There's a lot of technical details there. Another question, Andy. Uh, someone was asking, transforming electric field maps from the native space to MNI space, is it possible from rose yeah, yeah. now? Yeah, I, I'm gonna mention that in, in rose target, which is my next 20 minutes. Um, okay, so, so let's go to those target, uh, which is for uh, optimizing the transcranial electrical stimulation. Um, before you run those target, you have to do some preparation, which is to generate the lead field. Um, the lead field is basically some uh, candidate electrical field that will be used by the targeting algorithm in those target. And to do that, you can just simply do um, uh, lead, lead field as a recipe. So basically you just run this, let me, let me show you the code here. You just run um, this, this, uh, this line of code here. So basically you do uh, those, uh, the, the uh, subject MI, and then you just put the uh, lead field as a recipe, very simple. And then everything else is optional. You give it a simulation tag, and I highly recommend you do this uh, here. So we give this simulation uh, MI 152 lead field tag. And then also I recommend you use zero padding because um, when generating a lead field, the, uh, the, the electrode that will be placed are the uh, um, 74 electrodes, all, all of those 74 electrodes following the international 10 ton EEG system. So um, also the electrode will be placed on, on the uh, image boundary, like say like around the ears. So if, if the uh, MI is cut off there, that would be bad. So I, I suggest you to uh, use this zero padding. And this, this process will take a lot of time uh, depending on how, how fast your machine is. Uh, for me, like uh, my machine is pretty, re pretty recent. Uh, it, it takes like uh, five hours to six hours to generate. That's already pretty fast. Um, and then once you're done with lead field generation, you can um, go to those target and use those targets to do the targeting. And here I'm gonna show you a basic demo of uh, targeting using the maximum intensity algorithm. So you just uh, call this those target, uh, put in the same MRI subject you just uh, ran lead field generation, and put in the simulation tag for when you when you do the lead field generation, and then in the third argument you put the the coordinates of your target, and here I'm gonna put in the MRI coordinates of the uh, uh, motor um, primary motor cortex on the left side. And you can get the MRI coordinates uh, online. Like there's a lot of website. You just search MRI coordinates. You can just uh, uh, look up the MRI coordinates. And and then you put in a, also you put in a tag, but uh, this time for uh, as a targeting tag. And I'm just doing basic demo. So you can just run this. And, and again, I, I ran this before, so it's just loading the results. 
and you see here in the output, you see the, the, the electrodes used, are, and th th these electrodes are the optimal uh, montage. So these are the electrodes you should use to, to get this optimal um, targeting result. And also it pops out several figures, like this is the optimal montage you should use. Basically it's the same thing as uh, what you see in the text. Uh, and also this uh, 3D rendering of the optimal electric field and also the size view with the, the point, the circle is placed at the target location here. Um, and also you can you, uh, say, uh, uh, what I just did is a maximum intensity um, with two electrodes. So each electrode, uh, each electrode here uh, has uh, inject current of two mini ampere. Say if you wanna, uh, if, if you feel like this, this is too much, if you wanna uh, split this uh, inject current into two electrodes with each one receiving one mini ampere current, you can, you can do that, sorry. You can do that using this uh, max L1 per uh, algorithm. And you can also control the exact electrode number to be used uh, if you are using max L1 per. Let me just show you this quickly. So now I got, now I get uh, eight different electrodes, see here. Because I, I, uh, I entered eight for that uh, electrode number option. So I get eight electrodes. Um, and also you can do maximum focality. So for maximum focality, you, you can use either a weighted least square or this LCMV algorithm. Um, I personally like weighted least square because if you use this, you can use another parameter called K to control the focality and the intensity. Um, let me just show you quickly about this uh, focality example. So you see right now, it's, it, it's uh, the electric field is like more focused, it's not that diffused compared to maximum intensity. And I can also get uh, the field even more focal by uh, using the K value. So I can um, reduce the K, because by default the K is 0 0.2. If I reduce it to this, this number, uh, like 20 times smaller, I can get more focal. So basically K is a, 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 a weighting parameter to control the weights in the target and non-target area. If you, if you decrease K, that will give you more focal result. See right now it's, it's more focal compared to this guy here, a little bit more focal. <clears throat> and if you use weighted least square, you can also do multiple targets at the same time. See, here I am I'm targeting uh, both the left uh, motor uh, primary cortex and the, the right primary motor cortex at the same time. And I'm using this weighted least square with a very small K value. And then actually you can um, configure things even more. You can, you can control the uh, orientation of the current flow at each single target. And right now I'm asking the uh, current flow at the uh, left primary motor cortex flowing into the right direction and the current flow on the right primary motor cortex flowing in the left direction. So you can control this individually. Um, I don't think I have time to show this. <laughs> um, let me keep going. So you can also use in the voxel coordinates to, the, to do the targeting. So for that, you can, you can just open the MRI See here, I'm opening the um, MI of the MI 152 head, and then you click around. Say if you want to do targeting at uh, at this location here, you just click click this location, and then you you record this number X Y Z, which is a uh, voxel coordinates, and then you put this X Y Z into this uh, uh, calling for those target. And here I'm doing actually three different locations. And then if you're using voxel coordinates, you have to use this cut type and specify as voxel so that those target knows it's voxel coordinates. And then everything else is pretty much the same. And here, this, the next example, 
I'm showing you uh, also how to customize orientation at each single target location. You can use all these uh, keywords. So reader in means the uh, uh, current um, points into the center of the brain. Posterior means the current points to uh, the back of the head. And you can also use a customized uh, uh, direction vector uh, to do that. Um, so what if you don't know which um, uh, uh, direction to choose at the target, you can just say optimal. So, so those target will figure out the best um, electric field orientation at the target. Uh, okay, I, th I think I have only 10 more minutes. So I think I'm pretty much done covering all the basic uh, major features of those and those target. And I also, I covered this review res function. And now I'm gonna just try to talk about something about the outputs right here, outputs of those and those target. Andy, uh, there are a few questions sort of conceptually about targeting. What paper would you recommend people read for that? Uh, so the first paper I would recommend is that uh, uh, Journal of Neuroengineering paper in 2011. So if you go to the documentation of ROAST, which is on GitHub, uh, and you click acknowledgments, then there's a bunch of paper here. So if you also using targeting feature ROAST target, put inside this. The first paper is the paper you should read to get a better, uh, a basic understanding of uh, the uh, targeting. Yeah, so that's the answer. Is there any more? No, you've covered it. You can move okay. on. Okay. So let me uh, spend the rest nine minutes on this outputs of ROAST. So first thing is um, there's a text file called uh, uh, those log. So basically this is a log file, uh, just uh, recording all the history you did with Roast. So say like I did a lot of, uh, you know, demonstration, I did a lot of stuff for subject one. So there's, there should be a, a log file named as subject one underscore Roast log. So let me just open that. Let's go in here. Many files. Subject one, it was right here. And you see here in this in this text file, you have all the history of the simulations you have run, and it's it's parsed by the simulation tag. Uh, if you still remember, the, the very first example I ran is basic demo. So it, it it's, it's it's under this tag name basic demo, you have all these. Um, simulation options you, you specify, like uh, what recipe you use and uh, what kind of uh, electrical cap you're following and the electric shape and size and orientation. And if you, did you use T2 or not? Um, did you configure the mesh option or connectivity or not? And did you turn on resampling or zero panning or not? So basically everything. So this text file is very useful to, to track down what you, you have done in the simulation. And also for the those target, you will have this similar text file. Um, see, I did I did some targeting for um, the MNI one two head, so I should have a, a targeted log. Uh, let me open that. This targeted log, and this, this same thing um, in the targeted log. You also you have uh, all the um, options you specified, and that's labeled by this uh, tag name. So the, the first target, targeting example I did is basic demo and under this you have uh, the corresponding uh, those simulation tag, uh, which is the tag you use for generating the lead field. And you have this target, target coordinates in the uh, MNI space and also in the original and model voxel space. And here I wanna emphasize there's some confusion in the, in the voxel space because um, um, because when we use the voxel space for targeting, we click that in the original MRI. But uh, what if you also turn on the zero panning and you did some resample to, uh, when you generate the, the lead field? So, so if, you, if you do that, the, 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 the MRI is actually changed. So the, the voxel space after zero panning should be different from the voxel space before zero panning. So that's the most uh, confusing part. I have, I have uh, generated a figure here so basically this tells you when we, when we pick up things in, when we click around coordinates in the original MRI, we, we're actually working with the original voxel space. 
and sometimes the, the, the uh, MI is not in the RAS orientation, and sometimes we did resampling or zero padding, and the MI is transformed, and, and actually in, in those, everything is, is, is in this so-called model voxel space. So there's a little bit difference between these two different uh, voxel space. And uh, so that's why I recommend you use the MI uh, space um, if, if, you, if you know the MI coordinates. So then you, you don't have to worry about all these um, transformation here because uh, if you have MI coordinates, the SPM software will figure out the transform for you automatically. So, uh, so that, that's some, something about orientation. And also in this log file, you have all these uh, results from running the targeting, like um, the DX field magnitude as a target and the X field intensity around the desired direction. And also it calculates the focality at the, the target in terms of uh, centimeter. Um, okay, so, so that's uh, one output of uh, those, the text file and figures, I just showed you the figures and also those outputs, uh, the results in the nifty format, you have everything like the voltage X field in the, in the nifty images. And uh, because this is a standard, you can, you can load these nifty images in other software. And also it saves everything as a MATLAB file. You can just uh, load it. Um, I have four minutes, maybe just quickly load one of the MATLAB files. So load, you can just load example. Um, let me do subject one, we have subject one. Uh, I don't know, basic thing. Uh, So it's called the, uh, so I have subject one basic demo of those results. This is the MATLAB file. And once we load it, you can see it contains the voltage uh, as a one matrix and the other one, it actually feel magnitude as <coughs> a matrix. And also we have this uh, electric field as a 4D matrix because the electric field is a vector. So we have uh, three components at each voxel. So if you do size, if all, you have this uh, basically three different matrices, and you can you can do whatever you want with with all these uh, matrices. Uh, like your uh, RI analysis, you can if you have your uh, coordinates, you can extract the value, and you can also you can also visualize this by doing slideshow. Uh, say if man, then you have this uh, visualized. But th this is like very basic comment, and actually. If you just call review res, everything will, will be done for you automatically and to give you very nice um, um, figures from there. Um, uh, I also, those outputs the text file uh, with uh, the electrical and voltage at each uh, single mesh node. And these are very technical. So if you don't know anything about finite element modeling, I don't, I don't suggest you to uh, look at this. And uh, also for those targets, you have figures and also this uh, MATLAB file. So other issues, I guess I just, oh, New York head. I haven't uh, demonstrated, I haven't demo any um, uh, simulation using New York head because that's, um, New York head has a 0.5 millimeter resolution. So if you uh, run it, you, 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 are, you have to make sure you, you have a lot of memory in your computer. Um, and also I recommend you use IS head but if you don't have, if you're not sure about that, it's fine because those two, like the figure I just showed you, those can handle this IS orientation automatically. Uh, and also you use MI coordinates. Uh, the, the, the last trick is uh, <laughs> uh, try your best to use MI crawl instead of MI crawl. You see this N here, this N means new. This is a newer version of MI crawl because my experience is that MI crawl cannot give you the, the true voxel coordinates. It, it shows you like, like the number here, it shows you some, something not really the voxel coordinates. Cause, and I have written my own code, show, sorry, show header. And if, this will give you uh, uh, the actual header information. Um, all right, I think I'm pretty basically done. I can take in maybe two more, three more questions. Um, what are there in the questions? Lucas. Future additions, what do you plan to add? Um, 
<clears throat> future. So basically, one thing is that uh, sequencing for lesions for all the pathology heads. Uh, because we have a uh, deep learning uh, infrastructure uh, uh, almost uh, down there, we just need to integrate that into those. <coughs> um, the other thing, um, maybe some GUI, some graphic user interface for users to click around um, for doing targeting, uh, that would be helpful. Um, what else? Um, that's, yeah, I think that's basically, that's- the I mean, long-term, we would like to get rid of MATLAB. Honestly, oh, yeah, that's a very long term. That's a lot of work. <laughs> long term, we would like to get rid of MATLAB and switch to Python. That's a lot of work. Um, segment lesions um, would like to have a better post processing so you can analyze the results better. Those are the things, but this is long term. Yeah. The question about segmentation issues maybe you email Andy directly. Yeah. I mean, there shouldn't be any holes in the brain because right now those two patches are the holes. Um, but then, then let me know if you still find holes. Maybe the code is still buggy. Which is the infrastructure about lesion? Um, that's, that's something we uh, adapted from uh, a published work called uh, Deep Medic. It's for uh, lesion segmentation, but that's only for lesion. And we, we also need the segmentation for the brain and uh, the number of tissues. So basically we just extended that and combine that with the SPM. So that's basically the infrastructure. It, it, it's a, um, a deep, deep neural network. Do the parameters for MI acquisition matter or can it handle anything? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, in my experience, I, I haven't systematically tried different MI acquisition parameters, but um, I, in f so far, for all the MRI I have tried, those uh, is is uh, pretty robust in handling all these uh, different scans. Another question, Andy, is does ROS give you control over shape or mapping order of the elements? Does control what? Uh, does ROS give you control over shape or and mapping order of elements? Oh, you mean the finite elements? I would assume so. Um, I, uh, right now, no, it's not. Uh, right now, the the algorithm in the meshing software, IOC2 mesh, I specifically choose the tetrahedron mesh. So the element shape is tetrahedron. But I'm sure there's some parameter you can control in the IOC2 mesh package, but uh, that will uh, cost you some time to figure out. Did you see Deep Medic? Yeah, that's Deep Medic. Right, Lucas Hirsch has a talk on that. Okay. Okay, I think, I think that's, that's all it. All right, well, thank you everybody for uh, joining us and the great interest. Um, keep these questions coming. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna share everything today, the slides, the code, and this recording to the, to the uh, mailing list. And um, I also I found some some other buggy issue in the code recently. So hopefully I have time to improve and and, and fix those bugs in the next release. And thanks for all the users for trying and using this. And just feel free to post your uh, comments or questions on the mailing list. All right. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.